Hello everyone, it has been quite some time since I have shared a Sunday School lesson here on YouTube, but that is going to change starting this week. Starting this week, I am going to be sharing a Sunday School lesson here on YouTube every week. Lessons are going to be taught from the Union Gospel Press Adult Bible Class Curriculum. If you have that Sunday School book, certainly follow along in the book. If you do not, that's okay, because I will be sharing the verses. I'll be sharing scripture here on the video for you to follow along with me as well. Now. If you would like to go into more depth with these lessons, you can find a commentary that I have written out for you. You can find it at newfoundfaith.org along with audio that has been recorded. It's going to be a little bit longer than the videos. So you can again check that out at newfoundfaith.org as well. Now, our lesson for this week is going to teach us about the Forerunner for Christ. Along with learning about the Forerunner for Christ, we are also going to be learning that we should continue to trust that God has heard our prayers. We should continue to trust that God will answer our prayers as well, regardless of how long it may seem to take him to do so. So we should not give up hope. We should not doubt when we have prayed to the Lord, we should remain faithful. So our lesson opens with Zacharias, a priest who was serving in the temple during the hour of incense. We are told that his lot fell for him to burn incense in the temple. Now, the burning of incense was very significant, we should understand. And it had been a practice for the Jews dating all the way back to when the children of Israel were freed from their bondage in Egypt. The burning of incense it stood as a sign of being in communication or being in fellowship with the Lord. Essentially, it was a sign of, of being in prayer with God. And it was during this hour of prayer, if you will, that an angel of the Lord appeared to Zacharias to give Zacharias an answer to a prayer that he had been praying for a long time. This angel, we will come to know, was Gabriel who is often called God's messenger angel. Gabriel is given this name because when we see him in scripture, he is delivering messages on behalf of the Lord. In Matthew's gospel, he is shown delivering news of Mary's conception with Christ to Joseph, Mary's future husband who had desired to privately put her away because of her pregnancy. Later in this chapter of Luke's gospel, Gabriel visits Mary. He does this to personally speak to her about the immaculate conception of Christ through the working of the Holy Spirit. We'll see that in a Sunday school lesson in a few weeks. Now, Gabriel, he also appears in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, where he was sent to Daniel to clear up a vision of the future that Daniel had been given, that he had received from the Lord. So to Zacharias, Gabriel told him that his prayers had been answered and that he and his wife named Elizabeth would have a son and that they would call this son John. Now we know this son as John the Baptist. Now John, Gabriel would go on to say, would make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In other words, John filled with the Holy Spirit would be the forerunner of Christ. And he would move in the spirit. He would move in the power of Elijah. Now, this is very significant. It is very important. What this meant is that John would move with the same manner of boldness that Elijah the prophet moved with in his day. Elijah, we should remember, was a very bold prophet for the Lord during a day where the northern kingdom of Israel lived in complete wickedness. Elijah stood with great boldness before King Ahab, who was a very wicked king, and announced to Ahab and to those who were around him, he announced the great drought that went on to last for three years. In even more boldness, Elijah stood against all the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and challenged them to prove that the Lord, our God, is the one true God. You see, Elijah moved with this boldness of faith with the intent to get those who are living in wickedness to repent from their ways of wickedness so that they could see God and that they would turn from their wickedness to the way of God and live in obedience to the will and way of God. Now, John, as the forerunner of Christ, he was a man that moved with such boldness as he gave witness to the true light, as St. John wrote in his gospel. 
John, he baptized and called for the wicked to repent from their ways of wickedness and to turn to the way of God, just as Elijah had did in his day. John, he was the fulfillment of a prophecy that is found in the book of Isaiah that spoke of a voice of one crying in the wilderness to set the path again for the Lord or for Christ. Now, after hearing this news, after hearing that his prayers had been answered, you would think that Zacharias would have been happy. You would think that Zacharias would have rejoiced. However, we see here in our lesson for today that Zacharias ended up questioning. He questioned what he was hearing from Gabriel. He asked, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. So how can this happen? How would this be possible? Zacharias and Elizabeth, we should understand, they had gone so long without having children. They had gone so long without having children that they believed that Elizabeth was barren. And in this belief, it seems that Zacharias and Elizabeth, they had simply accepted that they could not have children. And in doing this, they had given up hope. How many of us have given up hope when it seems like the Lord is taking forever to answer our prayers. So let this be a lesson for us today. You and I, we ought not ever lose hope in the Lord. If you are prayerful and if you are of genuine faith and you're praying your prayer out of genuine faith, know that God has heard your prayer. And also know this, know that God is going to move. Know that God is going to answer your prayer. Regardless of how long it may seem to take, God said that he is going to move on our behalf and God said that he will give us the desires of our hearts. You see, the Lord, he does the impossible on a daily basis. So what you and I should do is we should simply trust. We should simply believe. We should have faith. We should never give up hope in the Lord. We should never give up hope in God moving on our behalf. As shown with Abraham and Sarah, we know this very well. Those two thought that they could not have children, yet God moved for them. And again, I tell you, in the same manner that God did the impossible for them, God will do the impossible for us. God did this same thing for, again, Zacharias and Elizabeth as well. So we ought not be impatient with the Lord nor should we ever give up hope. Now, because Zacharias doubted, he was made mute until the birth of John the Baptist. Once John was born, Zacharias, he began to testify of the word that he had received from Gabriel on behalf of God. And John, he ended up rejoicing greatly because of the wonderful blessing that he had received from the Lord. Again, you see, when you and I, when we wait on the Lord, he is going to bless us. And I tell you today that the blessings of the Lord, they are perfect. They are wonderful and you will rejoice. You see, we will do nothing but rejoice when God delivers his blessing to us. So again, the lesson that we can learn here today from this Sunday school lesson is not only about the forerunner of Christ, but we again ultimately learn today that God is a deliverer. It may not happen. He may not bless you when you want to be blessed, but God will indeed bless us. So let us be patient in our faith. Let us never give up hope in God and let us again wait on the Lord to bless us. And when he does, I tell you today again, you will certainly rejoice. All right. That is our Sunday school lesson for this week. I certainly hope that you enjoyed this week's lesson and that you will share this video with someone somewhere. All the scripture that I have referenced here in this video today, they have been linked in the description below so that you can go and read the scripture for yourself. And again, I highly advise that as well. Now, if you would like to go into further depth about what you have watched, what you have heard here today, visit newfoundfaith.org so that you can read the commentary of this week's lesson or so that you can listen to a more in-depth audio version of this week's lesson. Again, I thank you for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe as well below. And again, share this lesson with someone somewhere.